How's it going, people? Well, I got a question to ask you folks. Ever heard of Dianetics? <laughs> Find out how to apply it. This is that two-day seminar I talked about it in one of my BOM readings. Um, they keep sending me this same one. They want me to spend two days of audio-visual, hands-on analysis. Yeah. And they sent me a letter saying, hey, you bought a book from us. Uh, what's up with that? Well, here's that book. Self analysis. Self analysis will conduct you on the most in interesting adventure of your life. The adventure of you. It's all about you. This is totally about individuality, isn't it? How effective are you? What are your potentials? They keep using that word potential, don't they? The pen potential is the capacity to do something, not the doing of it. So potential is not really worth much. It's action that counts. Potential. How much can you improve? Well, basically your intentions towards yourself and your fellow man are good. Basically, if sometimes clouded over with not so pale cast of bad experience, your potentialities are a great deal better than anyone ever permitted you to believe. And that's the words of L. Ron Hubbard. On the back of this book, self, self analysis. So I'm going to come back to this. Oh, and this came inside the book. A free mailer. Isn't that nice? Bridge publications, because you got to get on the bridge to Dianetics. Guide to the materials. You're on an adventure. Here's the map. Mail it in. All right. So, life improvement courses. This is still, this is about you. Improving your life. Improving my life. The individual wanting to fix themselves. It's understandable. There's a whole bunch of books there. And look at all these courses. I've been looking these over and I've noticed something. Can you see it too? No prices listed. They don't tell you how much it's going to cost. If you have to ask, you can't afford it. All right. So, L. Ron Hubbard's self analysis. Let's see what he thinks of the self. Here's uh, something they mailed me in that envelope. I'm kind of surprised they mailed this to me because it's not exactly what I would send to somebody to entice him into a cult. Credo of the true group member. Not one of those not real Scotsmen, but the true Scotsman. True group member by L. Ron Hubbard. So he wrote this shit. I mean, uh, he wrote this article. Okay. Okay, there's like 18 points here. So let's get started. The successful participant of a group is that participant who closely approximates in his own activities the ideal, ethic, and rationale of the overall group. So to be a part of the group, you have to be assimilated, it sounds like. You can't be acting the way you want to act. You gotta. Hopefully, you're gonna act the way they want you to act, and maybe you already do. That might be good. Two, the responsibility of the individual for the group as a whole should not be less than the responsibility of the group for for the individual. 
least in the beginning. Of course, in the beginning, they load you up with love and make you feel all obligated. And then the love just gets a little bit harder to get. And you got to work a little harder to get it. And sometimes you get shit on a bit. But that's not the happy side. You got to get into the middle of the onion before you find out how rotten it is. But this is kind of a clue. Self-analysis. People got into it to fix themselves. Let's say, you know, you're a guy off the street or maybe a big-time movie star and uh, you want to fix your dyslexia. Because you read things and they seem out of order. I understand. That happens to me a little, too. Especially after a few belts. But, uh, alright, so you go and I want to fix myself. I want to improve my life. All of a sudden, it's, I love the group. I am Borg. Resistance is futile. You're nothing without the group. That really helped you to become a more self-contained, well-rounded human being. They really fix you. All right. Three. The group member has, as part of his responsibility, the smooth operation of the entire group. You're responsible for everybody. And they're responsible for you. I don't like the way this sounds already. Four. A group member must exert and insist upon his rights and prerogatives. So they got rights and prerogatives. I sure hope they explain what they are. As a group member, and insist upon the rights and prerogatives of the group as a group. And let not these rights be diminished in any way or degree for any excuse or claimed expedi expediousness, expediousness, uh, expedi, yeah, okay, that's it. Five, the member of a true group must exert and practice his right, oh, here's one of those rights that you gotta demand, to contribute to the group. So you have a right to contribute to the group. I thought that was a mandate. I mean, I thought that was just sort of, uh, you just, you pay as you go, and if you don't pay, you don't go. You go. <laughs> And he must insist upon the right of the group to contribute to him. What are they contributing? I'd like to understand these. All right, contribute. What? He should recognize that a myriad of group failures will result when either of these uh, contributions is denied. As a right. So you have the right to give them your money and volunteer all your time. It's for the group! Isn't that what you joined this for? You joined this to be part of a group. Look, there's a whole group of people there. Looks like they're talking to one guy going, We could fix you. You could be a superior person. Join the group. Oh, and parentheses at the end of uh, section five. Uh, a welfare state being a state in which the member is not permitted to contribute to the state, but must take contribution from the state. Six. In turbulence of the affairs of the group by sudden shifts of plans unjustified by circumstances, breakdown of recognized channels or cessation of useful operations in a group must be refused and blocked 
by the member of a group, you have the power to snitch. He should take care not to interpolate a manager and thus lower ARC. An acronym. They're all capitalized. ARC. I don't know what it means, but uh, I can start guessing. That might be fun. But, mm, let's finish this. Seven. Failure in planning or failure to recognize goals for the group must be corrected by the group member for the group by calling the matter to conference or acting upon his own initiative. And he didn't ask permission. Seven. A group member must coordinate his initiative with the goals and rationale of the entire group and with other individual members while publishing his activities and intentions so that all conflicts may be brought forth in advance. So, publishing, snitching, it's so Orwellian. <sighs> Nine, a group member must insist upon his right to have initiative. You've got the right to jump in and to somebody else's business. Because you have to. No one else can handle it. You've got to save the world and clear things up. <laughs> Good luck. Uh. Ten, a group member must study and understand the work with the goals, rationale, and executions of the group. So you're in a group, you work, you tell on each other, you work hard for the group. You signed up for that, right? That was the reason, right? To be part of the group fit in like a sheep. 11. A group member must work towards becoming as expert as possible in his specialized technology and skill in the group and must assist other individuals of the group to an understanding of that technology and skill and its place in the organizational necessities of the group. There's a pattern here. <laughs> You're a group member, see? Uh, group member. Nowhere does it say individual person. Group member. That's as close as you get to being an individual. You're one individual part of the group. Twelve. A group member should have a working knowledge of all technologies and skills. In the group in order to understand them and their place in the organizational necessities of the group. I think I reread that. Thirteen. On the group member depends the height of the ARC of the group. He must insist upon high-level communication lines and clarity in affinity and reality and know the consequence of not having such conditions and the rest is all in caps so he really means this shit and he must work continually and actively to maintain high ARC 
in the organization. In capitalizations. That's shouting in print. Man, does he mean that. Fourteen. A group member has the right of pride in his tasks. Whistle while you work. <laughs> it's allowed. And a right of judgment and handling in those tasks. You have the right to contribute. You have the right to work your ass off. Kitty. Sounds wonderful. Fifteen. A group member must recognize that he is himself a manager of some section of the group and or its tasks, and that he himself must have both the knowledge and the right of management in that sphere for which he is responsible. 16. The group member should not permit laws to be passed which limit or proscribe the activities of all the members of the group because of the failure of some of the members of the group. Yeah, those observers, uh, get off the sideline, get off your asses, work, work, work for the group. Seventeen. A group member should insist on flexible planning and unerring execution of plans. Are those like brainwashing sessions? With your little ohmmeter or lie detector thing? Eighteen. I must have been burying the needle when I did mine. I was trying. <laughs> the performance of duty at optimum by every member of the group should be understand, understood by the group member to be the best safeguard of his own and the group survival. The group must survive even if it has to hack off a, a part of itself. Oh, by the way, those are individuals that are... Oh wait, there's no individuality in group shit. It is the pertinent business of any member of the group that optimum performance should be achieved by any other member of the group, whether chain of command or similarly of activity sphere or similarity of activity sphere warrants such supervision or not. So you have the right to butt into people's business, snitch on them, give everything you got to them, work your ass off, and become a drone. And there's uh, a signature of the <laughs> of the mastermind of the science of the mind, our hero, LRH. Yeah, the only thing I can see that's free is this pink free career analysis. And I'm thinking I might do this on video later, but I, I'll do it drunk. So maybe not today. I don't feel like drinking today. Anyway, science is awesome, but this is just a bunch of fucking psycho babble. So stay tuned for more. Peace. The fuck out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. And join the group.